This is Reframe, the podcast from the College of Education, Health, and Society on the campus of Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. In this episode, we learn about a new project from the Department of Educational Psychology, where several EHS graduate assistants developed a tool designed to help teachers initiate productive classroom conversations around mental health and wellness, and in a way that's fun, engaging, and educational for young learners. Opening up about mental health and wellness is something that continues to be a struggle for many people. But it can be especially daunting for parents and for teachers who are trying to understand the internal lives of young children, especially those who may not yet know how to best express themselves, or even why they should. Here's Dr. Raymond Witte, Miami University Professor of Educational Psychology. There's been a lot of discussion about mental health. And, I mean, you can read the papers, you can watch the news uh, to figure out that we've got a long way to go. Um, And we're still trying to find out what are some really good ways of tapping into what our young people are feeling and thinking about. And sometimes, you know, when you do like a a paper-pencil survey, uh, sometimes you get good results and sometimes you don't. So instead, what if there was a better way to engage young people about their mental state? A way that was perhaps a little more in line with the way young people would be more likely to engage with their surroundings today. What if there was an app for that? Our growing cultural interest in digital engagement has bred apps that now cover almost every conceivable function. And because contemporary children are also increasingly accustomed to using smartphones and digital devices, it seemed to Witty and his team of EHS Educational Psychology graduate assistants like such a tool might already exist. But, it turns out, there's not an app for that. The team did find several apps geared towards adults, but there wasn't really anything useful that was built for school-age children. So we did like a pretty big search on apps and there was only like a handful of apps that we found to be like something that we would feel comfortable suggesting to a parent or teachers. So that was kind of disappointing. And then Dr. Witte kind of had the idea of, well, what if we made our own app? Because then we could really like tailor it to what we think is important and Obviously, there's a need out there. That's Sarah Bidwell, EHS Educational Psychology graduate student and part of Dr. Witte's team of graduate assistants. And she's right. Most experts would agree there is a need out there. Issues surrounding mental health and wellness are clearly becoming a concern across society. In fact, the statistics are staggering, says Dr. Witte. According to the National Alliance on Mental Health, nearly 20% of all people in the United States now live with some kind of mental health condition. Approximately one in five will experience a severe mental disorder at some point in their lives. And overall, only about one in 10 will ever receive treatment. So you have a lot of individuals that really have unmet needs. And kids are no different. But what's important here is we can provide good training, we can have the conversation, teachers can model good techniques, and that's, I think, a start because that's really not been part of the agenda in most classrooms that I've been in, and it needs to be one now. So, Sarah Bidwell, along with her fellow educational psychology graduate students Serena Daly and Molly James, led a project to create an app-based educational tool that could be used to engage children in an elementary school environment. And after using their knowledge of school psychology to conceptualize a model, they brought their ideas to a group of Miami University computer programming students who began building the technical components through a cross-campus interdisciplinary collaboration. The computer programming students were involved in a capstone class, which gives them an opportunity to gain actual project-based experience by interfacing with real clients that exist either inside or outside the university. Some of their recent projects have included making apps for major organizations such as KeyBank and even NASA. And like all their projects, the mental health app was also coded from the ground up, built with a unique architecture specifically designed to address the concepts that were advanced by the educational psychology students. The app is called How Zoo You Feel, and since it's meant for children, it will engage young learners through a fun and colorful, user-friendly interface. 
It begins by first allowing children to choose a cartoon zoo animal avatar before identifying the emotion that best describes their current feelings. They can choose from three positive emotions that include happy, proud, or relaxed, or three negative emotions, which are sad, angry, or worried. Next, a few simple follow-up questions will explore why they might be feeling the way they are. Here's another member of the EHS Educational Psychology graduate student team, Sarah Daly. We want it to open the conversation between kids and adults about their feelings. Our first goal is to make the kids more aware of their emotions as they choose them day by day and um, help them understand that like, it's normal to experience a variety of feelings throughout the week. And their responses are also categorized as either internal or external, and then logged in a back-end data management system where the information can be tracked by parents and by teachers to help identify any negative emotional trends that might occur over time. Here's Dr. Woody again. So we're thinking this could be a great communication tool, um, and there's a couple of cues that they would respond to to get a sense of, well, is, you know, has today been particularly hard? What, what didn't work out well today? You, know, you start getting some kind of a little bit of a story about what's happening for that person. Um, that's a great communication bridge for a teacher who can then start being aware of the fact that, oh, well, yeah, I have noticed that she hasn't been bouncing around as much and has been kind of quiet. There may be something going on. And once again, that can kind of facilitate potentially conversation at home as well. This would start to give teachers and parents some sort of documentation about what's happening for any particular student. And then, if it seems necessary, a school psychologist or a counselor could then be brought in as well. But ideally, in most cases, the app would be regularly used by an entire class and then led by a teacher who also explains why the activity is actually really important. So alongside identifying any hidden red flags, it's also about normalizing a conversation around mental health and wellness and at a much earlier age. Because even in spite of our growing cultural acknowledgement regarding various issues, many social stigmas and a lack of general awareness still remain. However, Dr. Woody believes that new educational tools, like How Zoo You Feel, can play a role in overcoming existing cultural barriers. So one of the app's larger goals is to simply get everyone more involved, to help children understand that it's okay to open up and start talking about mental health. We would make the argument that everyone needs to be educated about just good mental health practice. I think when teachers usually do things unilaterally across the classroom, uh, it sends an important message that, you know, this is important for everybody. And it creates kind of that conversation opportunity to uh, understand a little bit more. If you're targeting one or two individuals, I mean, that could be helpful in some cases, but first of all, you're making a guess that that person is struggling or needs help, which may or may not be the case. More importantly, you're probably missing four or five other kids who aren't showing up on your radar, who maybe need as much, if not more help, than the two that come directly to mind. So if you do it across the board as a classroom, it ends up being a classroom experience. And it's valued, or would be viewed as valued, collectively for the group. How Zoo You Feel will be available for parents, teachers, and school districts as a free download in the fall of 2018.